is V divided by R. Not a huge difference from DC, but we have a formula for the current flowing through this thing. The current flowing through it would be V max divided by the resistance times the sine of omega T. If I graph these, again, I'm not going to change your world yet. Or maybe it does. I don't know. I don't make it a small glimpse of your world. So voltage versus time looks like this. And current would look like that. Now, I'm not drawing them in sync. Uh, I really don't know the value of R. I don't know the value of V max. What I, the main thing I'm showing right here is that they peak in the same place and they hit zero in the same place. I'm assuming your drawing will be better than this. So we have an important idea here that we will exploit later, is that the voltage across a resistor and the current across a resistor in an AC circuit are in phase. If I know the phase shift of the voltage, I know the phase shift of the resistance. Let me throw in some caveats to that. That's the just statement I just said, the voltage and the resistance. If I just have a simple resistor circuit, just a single resistor in here, that's true for this voltage. Otherwise, what I'm talking about is the voltage across the resistor and the current across the resistor are in, in phase. That's the easy one. You ready for the harder one? Oh. I've got, I've got at least one nod there, and then someone who just had moved up and down, so I'm going to assume that's also a nod. We're ready to go. Uh, actually, I'm going to keep that the same. That's going to change. I'm going to change what's there. Let's take a capacitor in here. formula for capacitance that we've dealt with so far. Not parallel plate capacitor, just capacitors in general. Involving charge and voltage. Alright, so when we're dealing with AC, well, I, let's flip this around. So therefore, the voltage, the voltage with a DC supply is, uh, let's see, so that would be Q over C. So if we're talking about AC, we have this voltage across the capacitor is equal to Q over C. This lowercase Q is not for individual charge like we did before. This is dealing with a fluctuating charge. So we'll go around our circuit again. I don't know which is the high side and the low side, but I'm just going to pretend that that's the high side and that's the low side for my Kirchhoff's loop. Everything's multiplied by negative one if I'm wrong, so it doesn't really change the math equation. So I have the voltage from the power supply. So let's specify a power supply. Minus the voltage across the capacitor is equal to zero. So I have V max, I'll just shorten the VM, sine omega T equals VC, which is just Q over C. So my charge 
the amplitude is whatever my maximum voltage is times the capacitance times the sine of omega t. However, I want to know about the charge that's on the capacitor. Or actually, I want to know about the current flowing. I want to know about the current that's flowing. What's the relationship between charge and current? So if that's my Q there, then delta Q, change in charge over change in time, is equal to my current. In other words, my current is the slope of my charge graph. So if I looked at my slope here, what's the slope of sine? Yes. So my current is equal to Vmc omega cosine omega t. Now we'll find out if I screwed up on the negative sign somewhere. So my current is a cosine curve. Cosine starts at the peak and moves down and comes up. The voltage. Uh, let's actually mark that as I. My voltage is a sine curve. They are out of phase. Go through my voltage. So as I'm moving from left to right, which one do I hit first? When I first begin, at time is equal to zero, what's my voltage value? What's my current value? In general terms. Yeah. So my current is leading, because this is going to, the voltage is going to peak later. So I sub C leads V sub C by, well, a cycle there. If that's zero, that's pi over two, that's pi. That's 3 pi over 2, and that's 2 pi. It leads by pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Parenthetically, 90 degrees. And that is something else that we will exploit. first equation with sine to the cosine? The first equation with sine to the cosine. Oh, I know that Q, I, you're good with this equation here. Yeah. All right. I know the change in Q over the change in time is my current. And so this, if I had a charge time graph, this is the slope. Since I have sine here, going over here, the slope of sine is cosine. So that's why there's a cosine there. And when you do the slope, then you basically, since it's with respect to time, that coefficient, you multiply out front. Okay. For calculus takers, we just did it first derivative. Okay. Is that sufficient? Yeah, I just gotta remember that the angular frequency comes outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Now, I do want to point out here Ah, I'll throw it in over here. If 
my maximum current. So I maximum is equal to my V maximum times C omega. That's, that's just the amplitude right here. That's the amplitude of my current, of my graph. So the amplitude of my current is just whatever my, the maximum voltage is times the capacitance times the angular frequency. So V max is just equal to I times one over C omega. Divide both sides by C omega. This kind of looks like Ohm's law. I get V equals I times something. Except that's not a resistance. Therefore, we need to come up with a new word. First off, the symbol. We use an x, and that's going to be equal to 1 over c times omega. And this is known as capacitive reactance. So that X symbolizes reactants. I didn't do the same thing uh, before with the voltage, but V is equal to IR, that, that didn't change. And over here, we have V is equal to I. X. These are all for the capacitance, and these are all across the resistor. analysis of an RC circuit. So an RC parallel circuit. Uh, sorry, series, not parallel. RC series circuit. There are several ways of doing analysis. There's one that involves complex, uh, complex numbers, which actually is a simpler technique. However, it requires a little bit more math sophistication. So we're gonna do the, the more graphic, graphical method. Graphic method, graphical. So I'm gonna imagine I have an axis here and I'm gonna have arrows spinning. The arrow spinning represents the voltages for these three things and the current for these three things. So I'm gonna have six of these things that are spinning around. So imagine I've got an arrow here that is spinning around with an angular frequency of omega. Or you can picture it as I have this arrow spinning around at an angular speed of omega. Now when you're doing these, the first thing to do is you try to figure out what is going to be common to everything here. If I got a series circuit, what's going to be the same for everything? Yes. So this arrow, my first arrow I draw down is the thing that's common. So this is my, I mean, this is my current out of the power supply. This is the current across the resistor and the current across the capacitor. Series circuit current's the same. And again, this arrow is spinning around counterclockwise, as math tradition dictates. For resistance, the voltage of my resistor is in sync with the current across the resistor, which means the arrow is going to be right there. Now, whether I make it longer or shorter, it's completely random. I typically make the first one longer and the second one shorter, so that's my VR. Because it is in phase 
VR and IR are in phase with each other, so that means the arrows are lined in the same direction. However, for my capacitor, my current arrow leads the voltage arrow by 90 degrees. So if that's my current arrow, that's going to lead. So my voltage arrow is led. So this is in front, because as it's spinning around counterclockwise, this is leads by 90 degrees. That's a 90 degree angle. Now, my power supply voltage has to be the sum of my voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across my capacitor. So what I'm going to do to get the voltage from the power supply is I'm going to just add them. And I add them like vectors. Let's see if I've got a marker here that will demonstrate the typical Stunning visual effects. And that's the voltage of the power supply. So, since the size of the arrow is a reflection of the amplitude, I can write VPS is equal to VR plus. Uh, sorry, VPS squared equals VR squared plus VC squared. That right there. This is equal to the current times the resistance squared. And this is equal to the current times the capacitive reactance squared. And this would be the current times some, something else squared. And I'm going to use the letter Z on purpose, so we'll talk about what that is in just a moment. I can factor I out and cancel. I can go away. I have I, every term has I squared, and so it cancels. So I'm left with Z squared is equal to R squared plus X sub C squared. Or Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus X sub C squared. And of course, we got a name for it. It's called the impedance. It is not, as some students are wanting to do, impedance. It's impedance. A lot of these problems uh, with AC circuits involve trying to find the impedance of the system. Questions to hear? Let's do an RC parallel. Uh, I'm assuming people have that stuff written down already. Uh, oh, typically you would take it one step further. So that'd be equal to R squared plus one over omega C squared. Uh, just because X sub C. X sub C, the capacitive reactance always equals this. That's always true. That's always true. That's always true. Now, if you look at the textbook, sometimes or some textbooks will say the formula for impedance is, it'll give you a formula. There's usually words in front of it that qualify that, such as for the RLC series circuit. Here is the formula. The impedance changes from situation to situation. There is not a single formula for impedance, like there is for capacitive reactance.
All right. RLC parallel circuit. So we start out, we're going to, oh, by the way, these arrows, of course, they have a different name. These arrows are called phasers. Or I guess one of them is a phaser. Now, where you draw the first arrow is often arbitrary. I tend to draw it somewhere around 30 degrees, just, just the way I do it. Uh, some textbooks will draw the first one at zero degrees. And problems, I tend to say where to put the first arrow, or where one of them. All right, so first off, I'm going to do my phasor diagram here. What is the, what's going to be common to all three of these things? So that's my first phasor right there. I'm going to draw it at 30 degrees because, you know what, I'm drawing it at 30 degrees. So that's V sub C which is V sub R, which is V sub power supply. All right, now I've got my three current phasers. Where am I gonna draw one of them? On the whole three Which one? Where does the, I guess we need I sub C next, where does the current phaser for the capacitor go? 90 degrees to the next phaser. 90 degrees which way? Yeah. That way? Yeah, but not on the other side. Okay, so <laughs> that way? Yes. Why that way? 